Today on The Real. On Girl Chat, what kind of wife are you? I don't care what he's into, I am down. And Jocelyn shows us how to get our sexy on. I'm gonna be in the middle of the dance floor like... I weird. Just like that. <laughs> oh, don't come over here. <laughs> then they're every woman's enemy. Dark circles. Take one of them slices, put it under your eye. Plus, we've got Carrie Hilson. And everyone loves a good hostess. But which one of us has the mostest? I'm gonna stay true. Jocelyn, I got you. Guest host Jocelyn Hernandez is back. And after a while, you're like, girls, you don't shut the hell up. <laughs> the real. to our guest co-host today from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, it's Jocelyn Hernandez. So now, great. Jocelyn, as we all know, just two and a half weeks ago, you gave birth to a beautiful baby Gorgeous. girl, Miss Bonnie Bella. Yes! I love oh, her name. So cute. And she's you so actually well. made the choice to have a water birth. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I executive produced the delivery special for Bonnie. Okay. So when I was talking to my OBGYN, I'm like, you know, I want to film the show. I want to film me delivering the baby. So he was like, oh, we can't film at the hospital. And I was like, wait a minute. We're going to document this, and we're going to have a great time. So I decided to go with the water birth. And I didn't need any doctors. I didn't wow. need any epidural. So I went all natural. Natural. Every, yes, everything. Wow. That is awesome. Uh, what do you mean you didn't I need a doctor? You can... So, you know, when you have a water delivery, you only use, like, midwives and then a doula. Okay. You know, so you don't have any doctors. So you have all strong women, sort of yeah. like how we are. Yeah. And we come together, you know, oh, and geez. they really, like, it's the best experience that I ever had in my life. It's like having a baby at a resort, you know, because you don't go to the wow. hospital. You go to yeah. this birthing center. What does the room look like? It's beautiful. It's like a hotel. It looks like a hotel, but it's got a, a, a pool, like a little small pool in there. So you get in there, you have the baby. Like a jacuzzi kind it's of like thing? It's like a jacuzzi, yeah. And wow. it's wonderful. Like, you got these ladies that's helping you for, like, 15 hours. Be strong. You almost got it. Don't yeah. give up. And after a while, you're like, girl, if you don't shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. It gets annoying. That's real. It gets so annoying. Okay. You, imagine trying to push mm -hmm. for, like, 15 hours, and somebody's there, like, it's going to be OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is so, you, you, you know, you're a positive. strong woman. You are beautiful. You're <laughs> strong. And it's like, girl. Shut up. Shut okay. up. What's the Wait. craziest thing that happened? Did anything crazy happen? You know what happened? I had my wig on, right? And oh, I had a oh. headscarf on. OK. And I had a wig on because I didn't get, you know, I, I get my hair done all the time. But uh -huh. that particular night, my contractions was coming every five seconds. Yeah. They was like, they went from like every hour to like every five seconds. I was about to die. So the makeup girl and the hairdresser came in. They was like, you know, you ready? I'm like, girl, what y'all think this is? This ain't no face stuff. I'm having a baby. We're not just getting <laughs> yeah. makeup and hair done. Look How are you going to deliver this baby? So I took my wig off after like 10 hours. And then I put, I had on this little like hat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I had the hat over my eyes because Everybody was so annoying, and there was so many lights in there. So they kept trying to pull the hat off, and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and I had the hat on like the whole time over my eyes. It was the funniest thing ever. With no wig, I, I took the wig off. I cannot wait to I see this. I have to give you. I was like, oh, I, I cannot wait to I, see this. I definitely this. have to give you props because I wanted to have a natural mm -hmm. birth. I didn't. So what did it? What did yeah, it feel like? Was like, pain. be honest. What One does it feel like having a baby naturally? Yes. Mind you, I only had this baby three weeks ago. Yes. So I'm still feeling everything. Yeah. And it's wow. like the it's like it's like you it's like you're dying. 
<laughs> Wait, what do you mean, though? Like, like, imagine having a baby without no medicine. Do you know what that's that what is? I'm like the pain from yes. one to ten. How oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Like you know, knocked out. You know, I'm, I believe in God and I love God. I'm a praying woman. I was raised in church when I was a little girl, and I still pray five times a day. We just prayed back there. Yeah, just prayed like back the there. Prayer, everybody. <laughs> and you know, I was. To asking God, I was like, God, you really like want to take me out? Like, I really, <laughs> oh like, no, this is seriously. I was I'm like, telling you, it's no joke. I was like, I was like, God, please just just take me away. But you know, you'll get to watch all of this on VH1, executive produced by your girl, <laughs> Jocelyn Hernandez. Yes, y'all didn't know I was EP. Okay, I, I cannot there? wait to watch this. Listen, Is the father there, the, Stevie J, the father. You know, I had to let y'all watch. Y'all okay. Just wait watch. Yeah, that's a good one. Just wait and watch. Up next, Michael Jackson's daughter, Paris Jackson, has finally broken her silence in the current issue of Rolling Stone magazine on newsstands now. The interview titled Paris Jackson, Life After Neverland is the first ever in-depth sit-down the 18-year-old has given. In the interview, when asked if she believes her father was murdered, Paris responded by saying, quote, absolutely all real fans and everybody in the family knows it, it was a setup. When asked about the fact that many people don't believe Michael was her biological father, Paris responded by saying, quote, he is my father, he will always be my father. People that knew him really well say they see him in me, that it's almost scary. So what do you guys think about hearing, you know, what Paris has finally said when she broke her silence? It breaks my heart that she actually has to deal with people questioning whether or not he's her father and what she's thinking about her life. Like, you can only imagine this woman has gone through so much trauma and part of healing is coming to terms with it, talking about it. We, as a people and as a community, got to let the woman breathe and just not invalidate her feelings. It it must have to be really painful and sad to have to defend the fact that someone was your father. Well, she's defending that. The thing is, is that Michael had his children in an unconventional way Mm -hmm. because he was unconventional. Yes. Yes. And, you know, and, you know, when asked about her race, Paris said most people don't know her. They call her white. However, she considers herself black because that's what her father always told her and, you know, to acknowledge her. He, he told her, he said, never forget your roots, you're black. And she says that he never, ever lied to her. So what people have to realize is that Michael raised them by himself. And I'm not knocking single parents or people that have children unconventionally, but you have to have a plan because something may happen to you when you're the single parent. And even if you have two parents, yeah. you still have to plan. And I think that Michael did a good job because she is still standing up for his legacy. Yeah. When she saw that crap with that BBC show and Joseph Fiennes tried to play her daddy, she was like, oh, no, 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 that's not my father. Okay, that's him right there. Oh, oh, she was like, no, 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 you're not gonna mock my dad. No, they didn't. And, and so the thing is that he's been, he's, he's been um, passed for a while. If she wanted to really come out with something that he did, she could have done it. So her, her, what I'm saying is her message has not changed about her, her father. Her intentions seem... But her message has not changed. It's the same. She's like, he was a good dad. He's the only dad I know. That's my dad. I don't have to worry about if he's biologically or not. I'm black. There are black people that look white. No, we don't. We know she's black now. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, ain't not, ain't. (laughs) Listen. It kind of comes into question of people obviously want to know biologically. Because people just nosy. Exactly. And they I mean, need to leave the really girl alone. Your business. It, it really, really isn't none of but, our business. And she's still white, though. though. There are people. You, you say she's still white. white. Did, you say she's white. She's white. Oh, you mean... But she's, she's white. Back in the day. She's biracial. But why do, why do we even care? We do don't know what care. I mean? But we, why do we even care? I, I, we yeah. don't. We don't care, but I, you know, I understand that she's saying her dad never lied to her, but your dad lied to you. Cause let's just keep it real. <laughs> she's a white girl, and she's a beautiful white girl. She's a beautiful white girl, but she needs to stay real with herself. Whether her dad was her real dad but or Jocelyn, not, she's still a white but girl. Jocelyn, he was a black Jocelyn, man. Have you seen a picture of my son? My son. Yeah, your son is. My son has blonde hair and blue eyes, and he looks exactly like her. And guess what? I tell him, you're black too. Because so we don't black. know. See, this is the thing, Jocelyn. He's, he's, we he's don't. a mixed race. Honey, I must be going blind. 
Yeah. No, no, no. We don't know because don't they it. haven't taken... They, from my knowledge, or if they have taken, they haven't released the... Um, Eternity test. The, yeah, they haven't released DNA. They, so they, they don't care, you know? Yeah. She identifies with, she, with being... Black, I, and we say biracial, you say white, but for her, she's race. like, my dad said, you I'm don't black. forget your well, roots. I do have to give this girl props for just rising above the darkness, because I can only imagine what she, what she had been through. In the article, she talked about trying to kill herself more than three times. Oh, my God. She's only 18, so you can imagine the pain that this little girl was going through. Well, because her father passed at 11, and can you imagine, he was the... You know, the most well-known superstar in the world. And she didn't know her mother. Yeah. She had just recently um, began to know her mother. And, she you know, even... About sexually assaulting. It's a lot of things that happened to her in that interview in the Rolling Stone. You really need to read it because I think you will get to understand Paris a lot better. She reveals a lot mm -hmm. about it. And the thing is, because she has revealed a lot, now people are going to be coming after her. But I think she's strong enough now to handle it, and she still has a strong family behind her. So I don't think that... Um, I think... It, you know, I'm trying to get her on the show. I've asked her, yeah. I've asked her uncle, you know, to come on because she's always welcome here. We understand you, Paris. We'll be here for you. Please come. Please come. Yeah, yeah. Modern Family, Sophia Vergara braved the freezing cold this past weekend when she attended the AFC Championship game in support of her husband, Joe Manganello's favorite team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Woo! Oh, it's so cute. Sophia posted this selfie to Instagram with the caption, hashtag, here we go, hashtag, the good wife. Now, the Steelers ended up losing to the Patriots oh. with Tom Fine-Ass Brady. Oh, that is my boo. But what I want to know is, when it comes to your man's needs, ladies, your interests, are you as supportive as Sophia is? Because, I mean, she probably, I don't know, she looked like she didn't want to go with me. She Absolutely. Yes. I agree. I, okay, I get excited to do things that my husband wants to do. I, like, legit... Okay, when you're so in love with somebody, they could be interested in something that you never cared about in your whole life, but if they're so passionate about it, you're suddenly like, oh my God, I just find it so fascinating, <laughs> just what he's into. If he is, I don't care what he's into, I am down. Yes. But I ain't going to nobody game because <gasps> cause, cause I'm married and because I got a man, honey. The only time I'm going to somebody's game, see, I like the boy DeMarcus Cousins. He just got a $200 million contract to play basketball. <laughs> oh, that's him right there. Hey! <laughs> okay, but I'm not being funny. have to come right Once here. You, you start dating oh an athlete, God. I have a lot of girlfriends that have dated athletes, <laughs> and they um, they have to, like, really get into the sport. That is they hard. have to actually learn all the, like... The stats. What, the language? That's hard. The, the language, only thing the I yeah, that. need to learn is... that you know about basketball? Nothing, but I know that credit card pin code... <laughs> I need to have it. <laughs> I, I need to hit somebody ATM and swipe that credit card <laughs> while he go out there and run that ball <laughs> up and down that field. Really? Up and down the field! She's that's, not that's a field. Field. That's on the field. court. On the court. <laughs> Whatever Damn, it is. I... Run the ball up and down, honey. Leave the credit card home to Big Mama, and when you get home, Big Mama gonna take care of you. There we go. That's yeah, the only about place yes. I'm going to. Uh, I had to learn to love baseball. It was like watching grass grow. For I was like, OMG. come on, what is this? Keep it 100. But honestly, now I love the game. When I hear that crack <laughs> from the baseball bat Aww. hitting the ball, I just get so excited. Yeah. And, and when I hear peanuts, get your peanuts. <laughs> I love it. Yes, I it love becomes baseball now. memories that you build together. Okay. And, and it becomes so romantic. Like, Israel loves music, but he loves all kinds of music. I love it when you're with a man that knows things or is more cultured than you. Yeah. You learn about different types of music. He took me to the jazz festival. I thought it was going to be a snooze fest. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, no. I got yeah. to see Jonathan Butler perform. And I, like, got into it. And I actually thought it was super romantic and sexy that he was putting me on to some new things. I love that. Well, you're so okay. romantic. That's so romantic. Okay, so yesterday, Today, it was raining in Los Angeles, and I'm not talking about the weather, folks. We got a visit from Vivica A. Fox's Black Magic Dancers, who Ooh. turned up the heat in the studio, let me tell you. Right? <laughs> Why was he all in front of me? That's... 
Yeah. Yeah. He, was he knew what he lit. was doing. He that knew. That was so much fun. Our audience was lit. They were. <laughs> they needed to get it out. Now, Jocelyn. I was lit. Right? You enjoyed the I dance. I got the an up close and personal dance from that one guy, the, uh, what, what was his name? Stoker? Penetration Pen something. Penetration. Look at me, Stoker. <laughs> Penetration. <laughs> And his butt was so solid. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. So as hot as those moves were, now you can release that energy because I know you you know a little bit of sexy dance experiencing too. Look, I don't know right? if I can dance as good as the boys, but I can do a little something. Okay, and and that's so. Because well, the boys was working it last night. So I will tell you, since you've been here, me and the girls have been talking, and um, I think that every wife and every single and every person in the world should experience a little lesson in sexy dance. It's moving. Yeah! Of course. And maybe we should get one of the girls from the audience to come help us out, too. Yeah, you guys are right. I don't know. Who wants to learn a dance or two? Come oh, here. Yeah, that one, all the way over there. The one with the red one piece? Yes. Come on up here. Red one piece. She matches my earrings. Jasmine. Where are you from? I'm from California. Hey! Yeah, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly! Oh, my God, yeah. Jasmine, you guys. All right, so, Jasmine. Come over here. This is what we're going to do, y'all. This is just like a sexy move. You know, you act like you dropped something. Oh, 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 too much. That's an easy dance. That's okay, too okay. Much. Like you okay. But what move am I I'm going to be in the middle of the dance floor. I like, weird. Just like that. Oh, oh, don't come over here. <laughs> Our next guest is an award-winning songwriter who's worked with everyone from Timbaland, Mary J. Blige, to J-Lo, Britney Spears, and she even worked with my group 3LW. She's also an actress starring alongside Megan Good, Kelly Rowland, and Kelly Stewart in the new Lifetime movie, Love by the Tenth Date. Please welcome the beautiful, my girl, Carrie Hilson. <laughs> Here, but we're I so know. glad to have you today. Well, you know, I've been away. I've been, I've been hiding yes, out a little bit. bit. <laughs> I've yes. known this girl, you guys, for years. We go wow. way back. Like I said, you guys, she's written for everyone. So one time we went in the studio with you. You wrote a few songs for 3LW back Cute. in the day. Yes. And wow. she would vocally produce me, and I'd hear the song back. You'd be like, you got it. And I'd be like, let me hear it. It doesn't <laughs> sound like you. And you're like, well, it's not going to sound like me because it's you. <laughs> and I, I wanted to sound exactly <laughs> like Aww. you. So when you're writing for other artists, is there ever a time when you're like, okay, cool, you can do it like me, make it your own, or has somebody taken it too far where you're like, that is not the song I wrote? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a balance. Sometimes you have to reel them on in, you know, but not before you let them fly. You like it. It's, it's not like acting. You, you, let, you, know, yeah. you let them fly. You let them see what they it. feel. And yeah. then certain parts, you just reel on it. Yeah. But I never had to do that with you because I loved her tone. Oh. And I was like, I, it kind of, I remember feeling a little strange. Like, why? Why? Why would she want to, like, do it just like me? No. no. Her voice is freaking oh, I amazing. I remember those conversations. Oh. Carrie, it's been five years since your last album. And I want you to know, Pretty Girls Rock, hands hey. down, oh. is one of my favorites. <laughs> Video. I so appreciate that. You, your Thank transformation you. just kind of like epitomized what a woman goes through, and it's okay to discover different sides of yourself. That's right. That's right. So now you're back in the studio. Yes! Yeah. 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 It's called Liar. Love yeah. is a religion. That's right. What does wow. that mean? Well, love is a religion. I mean, if you think about it, everyone believes different things. Yeah. You know, but 
love is the one thing that 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 you know it requires sacrifice. It requires. Yeah. There's so many similarities between religion and love. Obedience. What you believe. What you believe. Yeah. Like if we believe this will work, then we will do what it takes, and we will be obedient, and we will do what it takes to make it work. Mm -hmm. It's religious. It's like you got to be that committed to to making love. Work. work. Yeah, you know? that's right. That's true. So, you know, and you it's one it common thread in all religions yeah, is love. love. Well, right. speaking of making love work, <laughs> you, had, you had a very public breakup with yes. uh, the NBA player Serge Abaka, Abika, Amaka. Uh, I can't. Oh, no. I'm not this one over here. <laughs> I'm not going to correct you. <laughs> oh, oh. We play it. We play it. We already planned this. <laughs> it's so Ibaka, and uh, I, the question I have is, what did you learn from that? Because it was really public, yeah. and you know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of talking about my relationships in, in settings when it's about mu music or movies and things like that. But mm -hmm. I learned so much. Um, I'm grateful. I thank him. You know, I'm I'm really really grateful. But you're not for, gonna... for everything that has taught me. Will any and of the new music gonna... right. reflect? Absolutely. Yes, it's gonna be good. <laughs> So your new movie, Love by the Tenth Date, yes. is basically a movie about waiting until the tenth date to have sex. Yes. Could you ever Ooh. do something like that? Yeah. Oh, I could. I could. It's. It's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I'm, I'm going through that. Right. It's been about a year and a half. I prefer to have sex within a relationship. I don't mm -hmm. have sex outside of when I'm not in a relationship. So. I can do, I can go a long time, you know. How long, long has it been? A year and a half. A year and a half. You ain't wow. had sex. Ooh, girl, but you wait, too but wait. pretty. What have you learned from, from waiting? Oh, wow. Um, you be sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mom, I've learned, I think, to, to see a person for, she is so crazy. She I is. love y'all. First of all, my mom and my sisters watch y'all religiously. Oh, I know. So we won't shut them out, but the gifts that are in the dressing room for me, I'm giving to them. So, oh, and I want to say you're my mom's favorite. So she's Aww. every mom's yeah. favorite. Oh, really? My mom's favorite. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. You know we love making it easy to win money on this show, and I feel like this game is one of the easiest ways we've got. See those lovely boxes over there that my co-hosts are have. Each of them have a dollar amount inside that could go home with one lucky audience member. But how much they win is up to them. They just have to pick the hostess with the mostess. Each of the boxes my fabulous co-hosts have in front of them contain a dollar amount. There's one dollar, one hundred dollars, three hundred, and five hundred dollars! <laughs> right? Pick the host you think has the most, and you get to keep what's inside. So are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, let's do this. Give me some music! <laughs> What does your gut tell you? Who has that $500? Pick one. All right. I gotta stay with my Latina roots. Puerto Rican princess, what do you got? Come on, guys, come on over here. He was gonna pick the Puerto Rican princess, honey. Yeah. Now, why do you think she has the $500? Cause I feel like she's not gonna direct me wrong. We like that money, girl. Yeah, that money. <laughs> We're gonna see. But first, we're gonna see what you didn't win. <laughs> okay. Come on, let's dance with me. Come on. Go, Jeannie. What's in your box? Go, Jeannie. Go, 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 Jeannie. Open your box. $100. Okay. But you know what? That's okay, 
because you still got $1, $300, and $500 still in play. But if you ain't feeling lucky today, it's Chelsea. I'm going to buy this box from you because it could be the $1 box. I'll give you $50 right now and we can end this game Don't and just do it. end up there. No. No. All right. All right. We're going to keep Adrian. going. Go. Go, Adrian. Go. Oh, it's me? Go. And you still have $300 in play. But you know what? If you ain't feeling lucky today, seriously, she probably got the $1, OK? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. They would give me the $1 bill hating on so, Twitter with Prince, honey. Hey, hey, I don't know. Yep. I mean, look at her face. Look at her face. Or you can take this $100 right now. I'm going to stay true. Jocelyn, I got you. We're going to stay true. 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 Dark circles. Oh, but fear not. Today we're saying hello to the solution. This is Under Eye Goodbye. <laughs> ah, Jocelyn, I am so happy that we decided to come to the farmer's market. There is so much good produce to buy. Let's see what we can find, girl. No. Ladies. I've got the best greens in town. Oh, do you? Okay, cool, because I actually need some fresh herbs and greens. What's your specialty? Well, I've got everything, but my favorite one of all, fresh in season, parsley. It's way more than a garnish. See, parsley is rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals that aid in overall health, and it will help you get rid of those dark under-eye circles. I'm sorry, my what? Your, your, those circles right there? One right here, yeah. right there? <laughs> I can see it. You have it? Yeah. Okay. So parsley is rich in vitamin C and K, which help brighten, and they deep puff those circles you have right there. Oh. And the other side, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to tap into these powers, don't worry, I got you. All you have to do is mix chopped parsley and hot water to release its juices, let it cool, and then you just apply it directly onto your eyes like this. Like that. Oh my gosh. Yes. Keep the mixture on for a few minutes, rinse it off, and voila, you should notice a difference in those dark circles in just a few weeks. Wow. What a great tip. That would definitely help you get rid of those dark circles, Adrian. Here, those. you need more. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you so much. Let's move on. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Step right up. Who's looking for some fresh veggies? I got the goods. Oh, veggies! Those are my favorites. Which one are you selling? I got greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, you name it. <laughs> but let me tell you about my potatoes. Help okay? me, please. Come on, step over here, ladies. Okay. These magic root veggies, they contain a large amount of vitamin B6 and are additional source of potassium, vitamin C, and more. Best yet? They'll help loosen those dark under eye circles. I see you rocking there, ma'am. You, woo. Oh, maybe mm. I stepped into a shadow or something. Y'all not seeing straight. Mm. Nope, but... they still there. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> right here. Now, we always hear about people putting cucumbers under their eyes, but potatoes actually work better. See that? Take one of them slices, put it under your eye. All right? <laughs> They're better because they stay cooler longer. And that combination of coldness and the starch from the potatoes creates an anti-inflammatory effect that reduces the swelling of the vessels under the eyes to diminish the dark circles. Yes, there you go. Adrian. 
Adrian, you yes. should definitely get some of those. Uh, okay. Who wants some milk? I got ice cold milk right over here. Hey. Hi. Hi. Oh, perfect. This is just perfect because I actually was out of milk. Miss, you definitely need some of this milk. It's chock full of protein, vitamins, minerals, and fat, all of which are vital for overall good immune health. Plus, mm, I see you're a sufferer of super dark and heavy under eye circles. <laughs> Oh, jeez! Oh, yeah, and this milk right here will really lighten those up. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay, you guys, I wouldn't call them dark and heavy, jeez. Why is milk so good for clearing up those deep, dark circles, you ask? Oh. Well, milk contains lactic acid and a host of other skin-brightening, tightening, and softening ingredients like mm. protein, amino acids, and antioxidants. Make a cold compress by soaking in a cup of chilled oh. milk, you're gonna place them under your eyes for 10 minutes and bam! Wow. Those unsightly dark circles will brighten in no time. <laughs> <laughs>